Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hey, are you looking to expand and grow your business? Are you looking for that edge and that next step up, that paradigm shift? Well, one of the best ways to get you there is through a mentor or a coach. And today's sponsor, Trevor McGregor, he is the man. He is going to get you to be laser focused, to get you onto that next level. And I know from experience dealing with Trevor, he is a master coach, peak performance coach, well over 10,000 coaching hours through clients all over the world and he helps you achieve a better health more wealth and freedom and contribution than you ever thought possible have that coach that holds your feet to the fire go on to trevor's website coachwithtrevor.com again it's coachwithtrevor.com and there you can get a free strategy session with trevor and you can decide if he's the right fit for you and you're the right fit for him Again, it's coachwithtrevor.com. You will not be disappointed. Are you ready to start investing in real estate today but don't know where to start? Sometimes investing can seem way too complicated, but it actually couldn't be any easier than with homeinvest.com. You know the co-founder and my friend, Nate Armstrong. He appeared on episode 20, and if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it, episode number 20. Home Invest is a company that allows you to invest in turnkey real estate. Their goal is to build powerful investment tools that make real estate investing accessible to everyone. They have contractors and property managers available for you with the click of your mouse. While other real estate agents can only offer a property, Home Invest brings you a full turnkey package that allows you to diversify your investments earn passive income and start building equity in properties. Their simple intuitive design allows newcomers and experienced investors alike to hit the ground running and to be able to choose the properties when they want and where they want. View easy to understand charts and data to allow you to buy in only a few clicks or just a simple phone call. With Home Invest, you'll be building your portfolio as quickly or as slowly as you would like. And right now, Home Invest is giving our listeners, Pillar of Wealth Creation listeners, a free course on how to finally win in real estate investing. So go to homeinvest.com forward slash pillars. That's homeinvest.com forward slash pillars to claim your free course today. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer, and with me is Jeff Cohn. Jeff, how are you doing today? Todd, dude, super pumped. Loved hearing the way you pronounced my last name. It was pronounced correctly, but you had the Minnesota accent on there. So <laughs> looking forward to chatting with you today, man. I hope we can bring a lot of value to your audience today. Yeah, I can't change the Minnesota accent. As much <laughs> as I try. Jeff Cohn. Jeff yeah, Cohn. Cohn. Jeff Cohn. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I appreciate uh, it. Cool. Well, I I'm excited to have you on because you're um, you're kind of the ideal guest that I like to have on the show. You've got a bunch of businesses, um, and you're doing really well with them. And you're running your your stuff. You're running what you're doing as businesses, and that's why you are successful about it. So I want to dive in and just why don't you tell us. Uh, what you got going on? You got a, t a ton of things that you're cool, doing. Cool, man. Yeah. So, like, what started it all off? Uh, I graduated with a degree in business from Omaha, University of Nebraska, Omaha. Um, knew I didn't want to have to report to somebody. I'm a serial entrepreneur, have been my whole life. And I could tell you all sorts of stories of crazy stuff I've done in the past if we want to get crazy later on. But I really kicked it all off with selling real estate and becoming a real estate agent. And after my first six years, I was earning a couple hundred thousand a year net, but I was still spending like 50 or 60 hours a week working. Um, you know, trading time for money. And so I wanted to create a system. And so I put a lot of focus and time into learning about how to build a real estate system to assist people in buying and selling residential property. So just, I wanted to be able to teach other individual single uh, agents in our marketplace how to become what I had become without me having to go out and do all the day-to-day -day servicing of the clients. And so in 2011, I was earning pretty well, but I was still working 50 hours a week. And I started a real estate team called Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group. And we grew in one year from me being a, by myself to us having 10 agents going from 
me selling 80 houses to our team selling 240. And I was able to make in 12 months um, off my team the same as what I was making on my own. And so I fired myself. And in 2013, I stopped selling real estate and I was able to live off of the agent's sales, just a small percentage off of their sales. And I was able to become more intentional about building the real estate business and not working in the business. And I think so often for a lot of the listeners here and a lot of the people I'm friends with, their challenge is they have a job within their business and they don't allow their job to be building the business. Their job is they're a cog in their wheel and they allow that to happen. Um, a great book I read on this was The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni, which addresses this. And The One Thing by Gary Keller is another great read, which really talks about being intentional about the hours that you choose to spend. So that spin cycled into this really successful real estate team. We've been number one in Nebraska for like the last three or four years. Last year, we sold 700 houses, uh, which totaled $140 million in volume, $3 million in gross commission income. So two or three years ago, because of all the success of my real estate team, we saw all these other businesses that run parallel to real estate. For example, title. We started our own title company. We did over a million dollars in revenue off our title business last year. We started our own insurance company, which is home and auto insurance. And when I say started these, I partnered with people that were already licensed in these industries and I became their marketing arm. So I would do all their online marketing, their strategy, lead generation. They just focused on the servicing side and I kept a large percentage of the business ownership by doing the marketing side and it's been a really great marriage for us. Um, I also started a flipping business last year with my best friend, which was always like our childhood dream of owning a business together. We flipped 50 houses last year. Uh, we keep every fourth house as a rental. We added 22 doors to our rental property portfolio, totaling over $2 million. And we fully leverage all the purchases uh, using bank financing. And usually we have to put about 10 to 15% down. And then I also started a call center three years ago to help my real estate team find listing and buyer opportunities we would cold call houses all across the omaha metro area and we now have over a hundred full-time virtual assistants working in the philippines through thousandcallsaday.com so if anyone wants to search it's one zero 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 callsaday.com you spend around eighteen hundred dollars a month for a 40 hour a week full-time caller they have a very little accent and they'll work on any project that you want and we've had a lot of success not only with my real estate business using them but also with the flipping business a third of our money that we spend for rental acquisition comes from the people making these calls in the Philippines to um, homeowners in the Omaha metro area. We make about 100,000 calls a month. So those are like the core businesses. There's a couple others. I know we talked off air. I own a couple core commercial buildings and some other rentals outside of my flipping business portfolio. And in total, I think I have about 10 or 11 companies. So you got, you're working 250 hours a week. Yeah, I'm working probably 15 or 20 hours a week. 15 or 20. So let's dive into that because that's, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six businesses that you counted off. Plus you've got a handful of other things going on and you're working 15, 20, you know, maybe on a busy week, you put in a few more. Um, but let's talk to us about how do you manage it all? Yeah, so... The way that I really learned to manage it, and I thank goodness when I went to school, I got my degree in business management. I'd like to believe I learned something that I have applied maybe subconsciously because I don't remember really learning how to manage <laughs> all these different businesses. And if you add up all the employees, I think I have like 350 people that work for me for the, yeah. all these different entities. But the really, the big thing, and to give all the credit, it's to the people that are running the businesses. I run Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group but I have someone else that runs all of the other entities I just spoke about. And I'm a minority owner in most of the other businesses I spoke about. Anywhere between 33 to 40% is what my ownership position is. But we had talked a little off air. For me, the focus was always finding the who, not the what. Too often we try to force the peg into a hole that it doesn't fit in. And so when I would come in contact with someone, I had like, for example, with the title business, I knew I wanted to start a title business, but I had no idea how to do it. I didn't wanna go get licensed and do everything. But I came in contact with a few individuals that had hinted to me that were in the title business that they wanted to do something new, something fresh, and just kind of change the dichotomy that they were in. And so when I saw that the timing was right, which means I had enough business to flow through that business entity to make a profitable return, I decided to reach out to these individuals, pool them together, we became owners, partners, and we started our own title business. And so I think that I've had the mindset of looking for 
the right people to run certain businesses rather than try to find the right business and then trying to force people into positions that they're not going to fit in. Yeah. That, I mean, that makes perfect sense. So you, you got your real estate team built up, you're doing all these transactions. So why not have the title company that's going to then service all those transactions? Plus likely now you guys are servicing other agents and uh, other transactions that are happening. Absolutely. Yeah. 70% of our business comes from our direct sales and 30% comes from outside. Of course, my goal is to make it so that we're only a tiny minority of the deals and a majority of our business comes from outside. But that's been also like a unique um, strategy that I feel like we've implemented in a lot of our businesses is instead of paying someone and outsourcing things, if we make, if it makes financial sense, we'll just bring it in house. So an example of something I haven't done yet is like I spend about 60,000 a year, my real estate team on photography. We still haven't outsourced and brought, or sorry, we haven't brought someone in. We're still outsourcing it because we feel like to get that quality um, of photo, we would still, we need to use a third party company. But when you have something within your business that makes sense to hire someone full time, like our general contractor for our flipping business, he's on salary and works directly for us because he, we have to pay way too much to have somebody else yeah. contracting all these flips for us. So yeah. when it makes sense, we bring them in house. When it doesn't, we keep it outsourcing it. Let's focus on one of your businesses, whether I, I, I kind of like the flipping business cause I'm really familiar with it. So let's, let's talk about that business okay. and how do you make that an effective business to be able to do 50 flips a year? Anybody who hasn't flipped no, doesn't know this, but anybody who has understands that doing one flip is hard enough, huh. but doing 50 flips is for most people, it's kind of mind boggling. Um, I, I was doing a lot of flips and I understand how much time it takes to do it. Right. Uh, how do you do it effectively 50 flips and you know, aren't, you know, yeah. The, the hardest thing, everyone, when they think about flipping and who's successful, everyone recognizes it's in the purchase. Everything's about the acquisition, everything. And that's the same in any business, any to any person that buys commercial sells it, sells cars, sells used cars, any industry, it's all about the, the, the cost of the commodity you're purchasing and then the, how much you can sell it for and then how much all the in-between costs. So where we're really unique is I own and run the number one real estate team. We obviously come across a lot of deals mm -hmm. and I always saw for like the last two or three years before getting into the flipping business, this need of having the right person to help me acquire those properties because I didn't have the time. I was doing a lot of other things. And so when my, my best friend moved back to Omaha, Nebraska a couple years ago, and I hinted to him, I was like, dude, you should be flipping houses, like quit your corporate job. He was making over a hundred a year, but I was like, quit your corporate job. You'll have the free agency. You'll have the ability to make way more than a hundred thousand because I had seen that there's all these opportunities and he was willing to invest a lot in the, the growth um, of our business and go out and meet with other top people all over the flipping industry. He's in for part of a mastermind that we spend 25 grand a year to be a part of so that we can you know, associate with the people that are at the highest level across the country. Sure. So as far as running the business side of that, I mean, it's just a, a process. So we, it's like a spin wheel. So we have a process A through Z with every house that we acquire. We have a process for acquiring them. We have a process for determining if we're going to keep it as a rental or if we want to flip it. If we've chosen to flip it, we have a process of choosing in the beginning, we always wholesale. So everything we ever find we first try to take that to our, our uh, investor market. So most people on your podcast probably know what I'm talking about with wholesaling, but we have a list of about 500 investors in the Omaha area that are always, always trying to buy flips, but aren't able to find them as easy as we can find them. And so we'll send out every house first as a wholesale. If it doesn't sell to the wholesalers, meaning we can't make our, mar our margin, then we'll close on it and we'll put it on the traditional MLS, which I can do for free because I'm licensed in the business and I still don't do it. We pay a guy on my team a thousand bucks to do it. But we put it on the MLS and we try to sell it traditionally without rehabbing it, which we call wholetailing. And then if it doesn't sell within two weeks, then during that two week period, we'll have gone in and determined exactly how much money we wanted to spend on the rehab based on how much we think we can sell it for. And we try to sell at market value. We don't try to get more than what the average homes have been selling for in the neighborhood, meaning we buy them 30% um, below market value after repair value. So if we know it's going to take 10% in repair value, then we buy them at 60%. And so if it doesn't sell as a uh, whole tail, then we just put it on the traditional MLS after rehabbing it. We have a whole process for all of those things. Yeah. 
So I'm assuming you've got all the people in place then. You've got the contractors. You said they're in-house, the contractors. Yeah, we have three full-time contractors in-house, which they can do a lot of like, they can do a lot of the stuff like painting, rebuilding cabinets, tile. Um, they don't do anything that we need permits for. We, we outsource some things, so plumbing, electrical, um, any foundation issues, um, wood floors. There's some things that take a little bit more. Yeah. Professional, yeah, you're, you're subcontract to that, we'll but you have your out. preferred subcontract. Oh yeah, that that makes a big difference too. I mean, we're probably saving fifty percent by being savvy on the people we use, and of course, quality it depends on the price point of the property. So if we're doing a three hundred thousand dollar house, we're going to use different people than if we're doing a hundred thousand dollar house. Sure, sure. So our strategy, I do want to say this. This is important to me because a lot of people that talk about flipping talk about it as a vehicle to generate revenue yeah. um, to live their life. We are actually the opposite. We don't care about the revenue per se that comes off the flips. We're using the flipping business to acquire rental properties. And we're, we're building a rental property portfolio to actually build wealth. Too many people I come in contact with flip five or 10 houses a year and make a couple hundred grand. And I'll ask them, what are you doing to invest your money? Well, and they'll say, well, I put it back to my flipping business. I'm like, well, that means you're throwing it away. Like you're just spinning. You're not actually building anything. And so the dysfunction was with my best friend as I'm running all these other businesses and having a lot of financial success, but I was wanting to deploy my capital into something like residential real estate because we can do so well on it. We're, our returns are crazy on our rental property. We're getting over 20% because we're acquiring them so low and rentals are great in Omaha. And so the dysfunction was my friend didn't have enough disposable income to put into these rentals with me. And so I was out there building my portfolio and he couldn't really build much of anything, maybe buy one house every five years. And a lot of people are in that boat. And so I said, okay, well, let's build a vehicle for acquiring rental property. Along the way, a lot of those aren't going to be good rentals. We'll just flip the ones that aren't good rentals and we'll use the revenue we generate off the flips to buy the rentals. And the numbers for us has been two flips. It takes us two flips to buy one rental. Okay. So when I said we flipped 50, we actually only flipped two thirds of those and we kept the other ones as rental properties. Perfect. I love it. That's exactly what I did. That's exactly how I built my portfolio. I, I flipped about three to one. Yep. Three, three houses, kept one. And, yep. uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. The worst it. part is I have to pay tax on the flip income. It is the most, I'm like dying at seeing how much, like if we make 400 <laughs> grand in flip income, and then we deploy all that to rentals. Uncle to Sam still wants the town. Like, wait a second. I shouldn't have to give you guys tax. I didn't keep the money. Right, but they, right. I did in the down pit. It's yeah. killing me, man. Yeah. It, it was pretty surprising to see that number a couple months ago. I was like, what? It was over a hundred grand. I'm like, what? I owe a hundred thousand dollars. So for anyone out there wanting to do this strategy plan, obviously for the tax man to come knocking, and so like we make 20 grand as our average net per flip. Sure. And that's with a 50, 50 partner. So he keeps 10, I keep 10. I then pay 50% in taxes. Yeah. So when I made yeah. 20 grand on a flip, I only made five. And you look at the risk I have to take because some of them I make nothing and some yeah. of them I make a hundred. So the risk I take though, to then only make 5,000 bucks, I'll make more than that listing a hundred thousand dollar house. Yeah. So, you know, anyone wanting to get into this, it's not as easy as a lot of people try to make it sound. It's all about the buy. You have to be very savvy with your acquisition. And it's been nice that I've been in the business 11 years selling real estate. So put me in any area of my market in Omaha. I know exactly what the properties are worth. So I can walk in them in two seconds, know if I can make a profit selling them. And that, that brings a lot of peace of mind to us when we acquire. So I think I know the answer to this, but I want to ask you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Because my answer, well... If I, I think our answers are going to be the same. Did you find it easier to flip more houses as you, as you've scaled from, you said the first year you did what, like 15? Um, our first year we did about 10. Actually 10. we did. So when I told my buddy we should do it, we started doing it nights and weekends. And when I say we, he started doing it nights and weekends. We did like three, one year and then five, one year and then 10, one year. And then he quit his job last summer and we did 50. So, so How's that process progress? Has it been easier or harder to do more? Easier. Yeah. Way easier because you're more intentional. You have your system in place. It's hard to do two or three. Yeah. You don't have the right people. No one's loyal to you. When you start doing a lot of business and you're churning and people start to be able to depend on you, you control everything. You control the buy, you control the contractors, the subs. Everyone wants to be a part of it and it just becomes easier. People are now calling us to buy the deals from them. Like people are like, I don't want to mess with it. You guys want to buy it from us? And the margin, if the margins are there, 
we'll pay someone 10 grand or 20 grand for their deal if they've got a good one. Yeah. And I wanted everybody to hear that. And that, that's exactly what I figured you'd say. And I think that goes with pretty much any business, right? Once you, you've got to, once you start scaling it, it becomes easier. It becomes more efficient. You can get your systems in place. When it's, when it's really small, it's hard to put systems in place, especially when you're not making any money. You can't hire people. And, and uh, once you start being able to, as you said at the beginning, fire yourself and hire other people. Um, then- Dude, that's it. I mean, that's where the rubber meets the road. The people that we've met with that flip over 50 houses a year, None of them have a one job in their business that they're focusing all their time on. Their jobs, most of their jobs is CEO. They're going around making sure all these things are working. I would, I would challenge anyone listening to treat it like you're playing a game, like a video game. Like, can you run a business not having a job within your business? Your job is that the business runs. Like, what was the game people used to play like 10 years ago, like Sim City or something? I don't know what the new ones are. But pretend like you don't have a job your job is to make sure everything runs without you. And what you'll find is that you'll grow way faster because you're going to be able to focus on the things that are growth based and not the things that you could just hire somebody for. So Gary Keller talks about this in the one thing, and this really came to light for me back in 2011 when I started my team, he said that everybody can pretty much determine what they're worth per hour, even if they don't work a salary job. He said, take your income. Let's say it was a hundred thousand dollars last year. Assume you work 40 hour work weeks every week for 50 weeks out of the year, you take two weeks off and you're working 40 hours a week. So it ends up being $50 an hour. If you make a six figure income, it's 50 bucks an hour. So his point in the book was if you can hire someone for $49 an hour to do any of the things you're doing now, you should outsource it and hire someone else in the flipping business. Pretty much everyone will work for less than 50 bucks an hour. So if you're listening to this and you're already making a hundred thousand outsource it, But as I've continued to build my understanding of how to run businesses, I've continued to ask that question. Can I hire a CEO for 200 grand if I'm worth, let's say I made a million dollars last year, hypothetically, and I'm worth 500 bucks an hour. Can I hire someone for that? Of course. So I've just outsourced everything. Like, and this goes to your personal life too. Like you could hire someone to make your food for you or, you know, shovel your driveway or mow your lawn. Like anything now that I spend time doing, I ask myself, should I be hiring someone else to do it? so that I can either use that time to spend with my family, to spend on my health, or to spend on building my businesses. Yeah, no, that's great points. I mean, you've got to do what you enjoy, but you also got to, you know, make sure that if if you truly want to build your business, that you're going to outsource what needs to be outsourced. So um, let's talk about the, some of the mistakes you've made, Uh, pick, you know, one, one or two biggest mistakes you've made. And how did you learn from those mistakes? What did you do to change it? Which business? I've made lots of mistakes. No one ever wants to talk about their mistakes either. Yeah, any business, anything. Um, Yeah, not not having, well, so waiting too long to start my real estate team was a a big fail for me. Um, Limiting beliefs is a big one. All of us have a perception, even you are judging me right now based on how I'm acting, based on the life you've lived, based on the people you've associated with. I think Gary says in his book, the difference between you and me are the books that you read and the people you meet. And I add to that the podcast you listen to. And I also have a podcast as well. And so I changed, I think a big change for me was changing me and being willing to re- accept the fact that I didn't know everything as much as I have a very rebellious and strong personality and wanted to think I knew everything. I knew nothing. I still know nothing. I've never arrived. Um, my dysfunction was that I, I didn't know it was possible to start a real estate team and leverage other agents because I had never seen it before. And so I just assumed it wasn't possible because I hadn't seen it. Well, of course I hadn't, hadn't seen it all. In my own world, no one else has done what I've done. I don't know of another realtor in Omaha that doesn't sell real estate. There's brokers that don't sell, but I'm a realtor owning a real estate team that doesn't sell. Most real estate team leaders still sell real estate. They still haven't gotten out of their own way of running and building a business. And they haven't added all these other streams of income like I have because I've freed up my time. And so my biggest fail was spending too much time trading time for money as an individual agent. Um, When I did that, my kids were four, two and a newborn baby. And I lost out on a lot of that time of their life because I thought I had to go sell the next house to be able to pay the bills and keep them happy and take care of my family. I had that pressure and I wasn't willing to just wake up and look around me and think about a different way of doing it. Now, looking back, because I was willing to put myself in that role for six years, I became an expert at what I was doing. You know, I became tenured and was then able to teach others and lead others because I understood it so well. So there's some 
good that came from the bad, but I wish I hadn't waited so long. And I think this goes for a lot of people listening today that make excuses and say, well, that's great. Jeff Cohn was able to do it, but I can't stop going and doing the painting. I'm such a good painter. I'm going to do the painting on the flips. It makes sense. It's the sweat equity. I'm going to do it. That's going to keep you from reaching your full potential. Like quit painting, go hire someone. There's something in your business right now that you should be able to just say, okay, I'm going to take his advice. I'm going to take the challenge, take a step backwards, literally take a step back, financially take a step back with the belief that by doing so, you're going to end up being much, much further a year down the road or six months down the road. Great. Love it. Love it. That's, uh, I feel the exact same way. So I used to be the guy that was on the construction sites doing all the stuff and I was good at it. I was really yeah. good at it. And you well, liked it probably, right? I like liked, the relationships. I, I, yeah, I did. I did. I enjoyed it. And I was, I was better than most people I would hire. So, you know, it's hard to step back, but Dude. if you're going to actually do it and make it big, you can't be doing yep. that type of stuff. So finally, no, totally I, agree. So that was a big fail for me. You know, there's a lot of other areas. I've spent half a million dollars in internet lead generation between my flipping business and my real estate team. A lot of those leads have gone probably not, have not been given as much attention as they deserve. Sure. Um, I have some regrets around that, not having maybe the best system in place. And a lot of people will say to me, you know, when's the right time to spend money on lead gen or when's the right time to add realtors or add contractors to the flipping business or start putting bandit signs out. My answer now has become now, always it's now. Right now, do it because how much you'll learn from it. So even when you think you failed, it's not failure. And so I started looking at failure as opportunities for growth. Instead of looking at them and being depressed and mad at myself, I think, awesome, never, I'll never do that again. Like it gave me the energy to recognize that true failure, like what is the worst? For me, it's ending up having to live in my parents' basement. Like, that's my worst. Like, okay. So I live in my parents' basement. A lot of people live with their parents. <laughs> like, that's my worst case scenario. Like, oh, look, got to live with my parents. I have, I have old kids now. They're well, not old, but 12, 10, and 8. So recognizing, like, the worst that you might think, it's not as bad as you think. Take some risks. Get out there. And I know a lot of people listening already are doing it. Maybe go bigger. You know, be willing to push yourself harder and know your why. A lot of people, I didn't know that soon enough. I was young. I got licensed at 25 years old as a realtor. I think the why is what fuels me when people say what motivates you. All of my real estate agents on my real estate team have to create a vision board at the beginning of each year. They have to share that board with everyone. And so when people talk about money, money in and of itself is ones and zeros in a bank account, but it is an energy or a force that can give people free agency and empower people to lead and live the life of their dreams. And so we focus a lot on talking about what we want to do with money instead of just money itself. And for people out there flipping, just thinking, oh, I got to make 100000 or 150000 that's not sustainable. That's not exciting to think about making the money. It's right. exciting to think about what you're going to do with the money and how it's going to change your life. So if you want to have more fuel behind the fire and be more jacked about life and getting up every day and building that business, think about what you're capable of by having that additional income stream. Imagine making a couple hundred thousand a year and not having to go to work or only jumping on a phone call once a day. That's the life I'm living right now. And the number's bigger than a couple hundred thousand. It's possible. It took a long time. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of sacrifice, a lot of learning, but it was totally worth it. I look back and I, I can't believe where I am today. And I'm so grateful I am here and I want to help other people get here as well. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love uh, the parents, but your parents' basement thing. Uh, Worst case scenario. Right. <laughs> Kids would probably like it, right? They have a blast. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. You, uh, you and the wife might get sick of it, but no, that's dude, seriously like, well, come on. We're in the U yeah. I lived in Brazil for two years. Oh, you do? I know what it's like to live poor. No one here is poor. Worst yeah. case scenario. We're like, you're in section eight housing. Like, okay. Like that's not that bad. And, and that, that's exactly what I told my wife not very long ago, actually. Cause she was fearful, you know, I'm, I'm buying multifamily and stuff. And she's like, what happens if it all goes down? And I said, I go get a job. Right. right? We'll have to work. I go, just sucks. Yeah. But yeah, worst like, case. Really doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, everything goes away. Yeah. That sucks. I don't want that to happen for sure. There's yeah. a joke, a joke a lot of investors make is when you choose which properties you want to buy, always choose properties that you'd be willing to live in because one day you might have to. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love so it. I think about that with my multifamily. We've got some that are a little sketchy. Um, I think our lowest rents are like 400 bucks a month and we take cash. Yeah. People that pay us only yeah. have cash. 
I don't know that I'd want to live in those. I'd have to bust <laughs> a couple of walls out and have it right. redone or something. <laughs> move it down the street a little bit <laughs> yes a couple blocks oh, perfect um well tell us uh, jeff what are your goals moving forward yeah i have i have a big focus in building um three of the entities we've talked about today um number one my real estate team my focus is always on them i have a lot of people within that organization that look up to me as their thought leader um, i put a lot of time and attention into helping each of those individuals it's the most real for me because i'm physically Literally right now I'm in my office, I have 3,200 square feet and about 50 agents and 10 admin that work out of this space. So I wanna be the number one real estate team in the country in unit sales by 2020. To be able to do that, we need to sell around 1,800 houses, which we will do. Um, to be able to do that, we need to add another 50 agents. So my goal is to add 50 agents this year. I added 25 last year. So if we have 100 residential real estate agents here in Omaha, we'll be the number one real estate team in the United States in unit sales. And then I also wanna, continue to build the flipping entity. I'd like to have a thousand rental properties. So that's like my five year goal. Um, we'll, we think that we'll be able to acquire another probably 50 doors this year. And then that will slowly grow as we build that wheel. Like we talked about earlier, the bigger you yeah. get, the easier it gets. We'll start branching out, maybe go to Minnesota, find the markets that we feel are the safest right now. We have yet to make, reach the point of diminishing returns in Omaha. We like Omaha. We'll continue investing here as long as we can. And then the third business that I haven't even spoken to, and I forgot to bring it up earlier, is our coaching company, which okay. is where a lot of my time and energy goes right now. We own Elite Real Estate Systems, and we're the first residential real estate coaching business to offer a live stream video of all of our flagship team's trainings. So every Wednesday, Friday, my team meets for different types of trainings, and we stream all those. I have a $50,000 studio. We stream all of it live, and we only charge $17 a month to any real estate agent that wants to be trained by one of the number one teams here in the country. So if someone wants to jump on that product or is interested about it, just go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com, click on live stream, and then taking it to the next level, anyone that wants to be like me and build their own real estate team, it's $4.97 a month, and we do a Thursday call, which is like a webinar just like this, but it's private with just the people paying, and they also get a weekly success coaching call for about 10 to 15 minutes. There's all sorts of other perks and benefits of that. So if you want to learn more about residential real estate stuff, jab, jump on our coaching site, EliteRealEstateSystems.com. So anybody can do it. It doesn't matter what market they're in. Yeah, anyone, the goal is to have people across the world. We just had someone yesterday sign up from Switzerland for the $17 a month product. Essentially, it's a training solution for all these brokers and teams across the world that don't have a systematic training approach to teaching and retaining their agents. And the thing I speak on often, and this applies to every business, is the thing that's gonna define your growth, the three pillars of growth. Number one, in my opinion, is re recruiting. So that can recruit any type of personnel. Two is training that personnel to operate at the highest level. Of course, inspect what you expect once you do train them. And three is retaining them by offering them extreme value. So a lot of people, the value of the world has always been like your benefits, your 401k plan, your health insurance, those types of things. In the residential real estate, I don't offer those things. So our benefit is different sys back office systems we use like client relationship management software, dialing software. We have a moving truck. We have full-time transaction coordinators that take every deal from contract to close. So you have to think what's the value for your contractors to work with you or your acquisition team to work with you or your assistant to work with you. Why should they stay with you? And there's a big, there's, you save a lot of money by keeping a good and loyal employees with you for the long haul. Pay them a little bit extra. My rule's always been 10,000 more than the competition. So all of our positions, we pay about $10,000 more here in Omaha than what all my competition would pay, which keeps people happy. But it's not just about the money, right? It's the culture. It's the way you treat people. Um, our, we let all of our staff come and go as they please. Um, they keep their hours. They have to put in 40 hours a week, but we don't care when those 40 hours get worked. Um, they can take three weeks of vacation time. They actually have to take three weeks. They get fired if they don't. So they have to take 15 days off a year which I still don't think is enough. I think 30 days is probably better. Um, we'll try to get them all to up to 30 days eventually, but people are like, 30 days? How would I travel 30 days? So, cool. trying to help people live, live, live and lead better lives, man. Well, yeah, and you're, you're, you know, you're leading by example, so that's, that's awesome. Um, so, let's talk about some of the essential people, um, mentors, Who do you, who's in your, your sphere that uh, really influences you or has influenced you or even books, I guess. Yeah. You know, for me, a lot of it's probably been podcasts I listened to. I was really big into Hyben Digital, Pat Hyben for residential real estate, sure. Toby Salgado, 
um, had a really has a really great podcast right now. Tons of listeners. Josh Smith, GSD mode. So for a couple of years, it was all like education. Could learn as much as I could learn, and then I started to recognize like books weren't getting me as far as I wanted to go. I felt like they weren't answering all my questions, and you can't ask a question to a book. Right. That's what I think I like so much about podcasts, especially live podcasts. Um, I host a podcast every Wednesday. It's called the Team Building Podcast by Jeff Cohn, iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. And we, we host it live. So if someone's on our Elite Real Estate Systems Facebook page publicly, they can ask questions and engage with us live during the podcast. So that's really neat to be able to jump on and be able to engage with people. And then the next level is finding people that you want to be like and reaching out to them and going physically to their space, brick and mortar, and go visit them in their city. I've visited over 100 cities to meet with top people, not only in just residential real estate, but every other area you've heard me talk about today. So instead of reading about it, listening to podcasts, studying it online, I'm like, why not just go meet with the people? And you would be shocked. You probably already know this, but the audience would be shocked that I've never had someone tell me no. Every person, and this was even when I was selling only 50, 60 houses a year and didn't have any of these other businesses. When I'd call somebody and say, hey, can I come visit you for two hours? They'd say, you don't need to come visit. Let's just talk on the phone. And I'd say, oh, I'm already going to be in your area. Lie. I'm already going to be out there, man. No big deal. Let me come check it out. So I would fly to one area, rent a car, and usually drive to two or three states and then fly out of a different state and try to get to five or six different top-level people within a three-day period. And I invested, you know, in the beginning, probably a couple hundred thousand dollars to learn how to build my real estate team. And then we've done the exact same thing with these different business entities. So don't feel like you have to invent the wheel in your marketplace or you have to figure it out in your marketplace. Find a marketplace similar to yours that's outside of your market so people don't feel like you're competing against them yep. and go pick their brain and create your own little mastermind groups. So I know this is a long answer, but the next thing is masterminds. I, I joined GoBundance was a group. That's where I met Maddie Aitchison, a lot of other amazing people. Um, GoBundance is a group of entrepreneurs. They're all millionaires or uh, aspiring to be millionaires or millionaires. And we would meet monthly online and then quarterly in person and have events that are focused around they, have, they call them their five pillars. And it's not just wealth building, but it's like physical health, relationships. It's all the things that matter to people, not just the money. And I think the old school is focused so much on money. I think new school with your millennials and your Z-Gen, it's more lifestyle. Is that the mastermind that uh, travels all over the world? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we went to, I was with them when they went to Vietnam. They did South Africa last year. I think they just announced Japan this year. So once a year, they do these epic trips. They're usually like 14 days long and they just go and do like, it's called bucket list trips. It's like they went hang gliding. They, we hiked through the jungle for two days in Nam. We stayed in like these huge caves. Cool. It's like back to the leading and living lives of your dreams. Like we're doing these things that are ridiculous. Like I came home and people were like, what did you like? Sometimes you can't even tell people what you did because they seem so <laughs> ridiculous. Like people won't even believe you. We did the amazing race in Saigon. Really? last November and my, my team won. So I'll put that out there. Maddie's team lost. <laughs> oh, that's fun. That's fun. That's it's good stuff. Like, yeah. It sounds like a good group. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And if you're not stopping, my mom always taught me, I still thank God to have my parents with me. They're both in their sixties. And she always said, you have to stop to smell the roses. So often we just buckle down and we work and we grind and we grind and we save and we save. And it's like, what's the point? Like, wh why are we doing this? So take care of yourself. Like go on a trip, go do something, you know, right after this podcast, go book a cruise. You can go to Fort Lauderdale, go on a five day cruise and come back for less than $2,000 for two people. And I know, cause I just took 20 people um, to Honduras and Mexico last week on a five night cruise. It cost me cool. 16 grand to take 20 people. Who'd you Dude, take? Your I took all my real estate team? agents. Anyone awesome. that had sold 30 houses by October of last year, I took with. Awesome. So like, Go live your life. It's not as expensive as everybody thinks. They just don't choose to make time for it. And maybe that's because they have a job within their business and they're not giving themselves the time off. That's where it fixes things. If you have someone else that's doing all those jobs for you, then you can walk away and know that everything's being taken care of back home. Yeah, I think one of the key takeaways that I'm taking from this whole you know, conversation with you, which has been awesome, by the way, is fire yourself out of your out of your business and go build your business don't just don't just focus on building your job within the business and that's what so many small businesses do uh they they've got a job yeah you know, they're so and i understand that like people are just surviving and their focus yeah. isn't building and scaling their business their focus yeah. is survival right. but you've got to get out of the survival mindset 
even if you want to just sustain, which I think a lot of people, I hear the sentence a lot from people that are close to me. If I could just make X, I'd be good. The truth is that's not true. No. If you got to X, which I've gotten to X a hundred times, my X, I kept getting to it. It wasn't good enough because it's not about the money. Gary Keller has on the front of the um, millionaire real estate agent, which is like the Bible of how to build and scale a successful real estate business. He says, it's not about the money. It's about being the best that you can be. You're not truly happy unless you're feeling pain, unless you're failing and stretching yourself. Too many people listening to this right now, their entire focus is to not feel pain and to not be stretched. They want to be comfortable. But the truth is that the more comfortable you get, the less comfortable it will become. Yeah. And so I take like obesity for an example. I was actually 320 pounds in October of last year. Um, today I weigh 280. My goal is to get to 200. And I was very comfortable eating 3,000 calories a day and not working out more than 3,000 calories to burn it off. And I got really, really fat. That was the side effect. And I think people have fat businesses where they're not being intentional. And so the business is starting to kind of dismantle. And then people choose to act once they see that the business is maybe almost ready to go under. Act now. Don't wait. Don't make my mistake of going into 320 pounds overweight. Act now so that you don't have to have those issues. Wow. Congratulations, by the way. That's awesome. Thanks. So you see me, I don't know if you noticed the green juice here. Yeah. I'm, I'm on a five-day juice cleanse. Every three months, I'm doing a five-day juice cleanse, but I'm doing a ketogenic diet. Um, so I have okay. not had grain, sugar, or dairy products for 88 days. How do you feel? I feel freaking awesome. How, how, do you, how do I seem like I feel? Yeah. You seem <laughs> energized. I, Jab, but, dude. But I don't know how you normally, how you. Uh, this is my level usually. Yeah. I'll probably crash after the podcast, but I've been feeling awesome. You're just, I'm running off fat and I've got a lot of it still. So <laughs> I feel jacked up, but it's been an awesome, an awesome um, strategy for me. It's not for everybody, but I'm going to go 365 days, no grain, sugar, dairy. So that's cutting out all sodas. I mean, grain, sugar, dairy covers pretty much 95% of the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I can't remember what it was. I, I listened to or uh, watched it on Netflix. It was about sugar and it was, yeah, just dude, I'm watching that right now. It's called uh, sugar. Yeah. It's called sugar. It's insane. And yeah, I believe in all that stuff. What, what it does to your body. It's just like, it's, it's, they talk about it being as bad or worse than cocaine. I think yeah, like, it's more bad. addictive 10 times. Yeah. That's as addictive. And yeah. anyone, everyone's like, that's stupid. And I'll be like, did you eat sugar today? Quit doing sugar for 30 days. I challenge anyone listening. Whole 30 is a good diet too. If you haven't heard of that. Um, it, it's similar to what I've been doing. Try not eating sugar for 30 days. Take yeah, the challenge. Good it's luck. Hard. It's freaking I did addicting. It. I did it for a year. Oh, you uh, did it, bro. Yeah, about three years ago now. And I, I've been wanting to get back on it. And I haven't been able to because it's so flipping You'll, hard. People can go five days, six days. Yeah. But after that, yeah. they quit. I've had a lot of people that I've already inspired that said, I'm going to do it. And they'll tell me I'm doing it. And then a week later, oh, I didn't do it. Yeah, I failed. Because it's, it's addicting. And I did it for a year and I got it. I did it, but now I'm trying to do it again. And it's been, I just, I can't. And you know you can. It's just, I know I can. 30 days is the grinder. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, let's move on. Uh, last thing, what's a, what are you reading right now or what's one of your favorite books that you can recommend to us? Yeah, you know, I've read, I've read a lot. Um, oh, I've said a couple of them. For those that haven't read The One Thing, that's probably one of my favorites. I, I've been big into business creation, so books that were spoke to business. And now I'm kind of moving out of business and more so leading and living the life of my dreams. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about The One Thing. It talks about being healthy in every aspect of your life. Um, for communication, learning to better communicate with others, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People is probably one of the best books I've ever read. Love for that. learning how to have multiple businesses, multiple streams of income is good. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki is obviously a, le a legendary book, one of the best. Outwitting the Devil is another Dale Carnegie book that wasn't released till after he had died, which I th think is pretty unique. Um, I love Extreme Ownership by Jacko. He's an ex-Navy SEAL. Uh, Chris Kyle, which is an Ameri who's an American hero. Yep. American Sniper was based on him. Yep. Um, Chris Kyle was in Jocko's platoon, or I don't know what you call it in the SEALs, but in his SEAL team, part of his SEAL team. But Extreme Ownership's awesome, just owning up to everything that you're in charge of in your life. Um, the Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer is another really great book that yep. talks about how to engage with people. It talks about the influential zones and the informative zones, how there's four informative and three influential. So like this chat and on a podcast is influential. You can actually influence something. 
also face-to-face -face communication in person and in group settings. But a lot of people, especially millennials and Z-Gen, want to rely on text messaging and email and paper, stuff sent via paper. And that's just informational. You can't influence reactions by people in those methods. And so sure. that book taught me a lot about how to better engage with others. Cool. There's a little list of books. Yeah, I love it. Like, I read, I read listening. a little bit. <laughs> that's good. So last thing is, what is your definition of the secret of financial freedom? Definition of the secret of financial freedom. Ooh, I've got a good one. I've never used this one before. Choosing to believe that you're financially well off today and always striving to become better. Cool. Love it. Love it. Well, Jeff, I appreciate you being on the show and, and, uh, I've learned a ton from this. So this is I'm awesome, sure, man. This is fun. Sure my, yeah, I'm sure my guests are, uh, or my uh, listeners are, are excited hearing you and have learned a ton. So I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, and if anyone wants to give me a shout out, you can find me on Facebook. It's just okay. Jeff Cohn um, or Elite Real Estate Systems and say thank you. And if there's anything I can do for anybody, feel free to reach out. When you've got a podcast, how do they reach your podcast too? What's yeah, that? just go Elite Real Estate Systems is the name on Facebook. It's public. Okay. And so I'll stream my podcast there, but it, to see all of my podcast episodes or to register to get emails every time a new podcast goes out, you can go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com and click on podcast. Okay. And if you're a realtor listening, I actually give away a free gift on every podcast, JeffsFreeGift.com, J-E-F-F-S, FreeGift.com. You'll get two PDFs. One is how to build a successful real estate team. And the other is our lead conversion guide to converting internet leads over 3%, which is what we've been doing for the last couple of years. So if you're in real estate, go check that out. You'll get two free guides. All you have to pay me to get those is your email address. And then I'll stock <laughs> and, you every day. Right, right, right. <laughs> I spam me all the time. That's all I'm going to do with my time. That's all I'm going to personally do. And you mentioned that coaching, and I think you mentioned that they could go onto your main webpage, right? With that? Yep, all that info is at EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Okay. Okay. Uh, my real estate team is Omaha's Elite. Obviously, that's Omaha's the hat. Elite. So Omaha's Elite Real Estate Group or Omaha's Elite.com if someone wants to check out the real estate site or has referrals in the Omaha area, we'll pay out a 25% referral fee. Okay. But yeah, the coaching business is pretty awesome. We launched last year and we expect to be into the hundreds of clients by the end of this year. We have some really great affiliate relationships with Berkshire Hathaway and Boomtown and some other big businesses. So if anyone out there just wants to click into all of my team's trainings Wednesdays, Fridays, 17 bucks. That's like Netflix. That's like that's super cheap. That's eight hours of content and that anyone can engage too. You can instant message us during our live trainings and we'll respond to you and your agents. So you can plug all your team into it if you wanted to. Yeah, that's, that's gold. Cool. That, that's gold for anybody, especially anybody who's an agent. That's gold. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for being on the show. And yeah, man, uh, my pleasure. Yeah. Have a great rest of the day, man. Yeah, hey, you too. Stay warm. I hey, appreciate Jeff Cohn for coming on the show today and giving us his valuable insight and uh, talking to us about some, some fun stories. Obviously, high energy guy. Uh, he's got a ton of things going on right now, a bunch of businesses, very successful. So fun to talk to people like that. And uh, three things that I took from him. One was uh, find the who, not the, not the what. So he talked about finding people that can help create your businesses with you, maybe help partner with you um, that are going to be obviously good employees um, that are going to be good team members and going to get you along the way. So not necessarily focusing only on the what, but focusing on the, the who, the people that are going to be in place. The other thing uh, that he mentioned, it's all about the, the, the buy. It's all about the cost of the commodity. And when you purchase that, um, and that's going to really catapult you to be able to be successful um, with whatever product that would be. So if you're buying a piece of real estate, we're focusing on the, the, the purchase, not so much on the, the sale price. We're focusing on the purchase price. Uh, then the last thing, really important, and uh, I would challenge everybody to really think about this one, is don't trade your time for money. And he talked about, you know, being able to leverage others, uh, being able to leverage your systems and you know, your processes, and just make sure you take a step back from the business. So I would challenge everybody to take a step back from your business and try to figure out what can you replace uh, yourself with? Can you replace yourself with somebody that can, that can maybe paint the house versus you painting the house or, you know, 
whatever that is that you're doing, maybe doing the books or, or whatever it is that you're doing that maybe you can replace yourself with. I was talking to somebody else and they said they want to be the dumbest person in their company. They want to replace themselves with people that are completely smarter than them. Um, so they're, they're one of the dumbest people's in charge. So uh, look for those types of things that you can step back from your business. Um, so, so those are three great things. And obviously there was much more with this interview. So appreciate again, Jeff Cohen for coming on the show and spending time with us. I hope you enjoyed it. And I am Todd Dexter. I'm signing out. Make every day a Saturday. Are you ready to start investing in real estate today, but don't know where to start? Sometimes investing can seem way too complicated, but it actually couldn't be any easier than with homeinvest.com. You know the co-founder and my friend, Nate Armstrong. He appeared on episode 20, and if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it, episode number 20. Home Invest is a company that allows you to invest in turnkey real estate. Their goal is to build powerful investment tools that make real estate investing accessible to everyone. They have contractors and property managers available for you with the click of your mouse. While other real estate agents can only offer a property, Home Invest brings you a full turnkey package that allows you to diversify your investments, earn passive income and start building equity in properties. Their simple intuitive design allows newcomers and experienced investors alike to hit the ground running and to be able to choose the properties when they want and where they want. View easy to understand charts and data to allow you to buy in only a few clicks or just a simple phone call. With Home Invest, you'll be building your portfolio as quickly or as slowly as you would like. And right now, Home Invest is giving our listeners, Pillar of Wealth Creation listeners, a free course on how to finally win in real estate investing. So go to homeinvest.com forward slash pillars. That's homeinvest.com forward slash pillars to claim your free course today.